welcome back to Fugit's Blitz and we're back with the history lessons this time real tanks and I'm going to combine two in one we're going to look at the history of the T92 and the M551 Sheridan two tanks that have currently hit the game Blitz and caused a bit of a stir so let's kick off with the T92 light tank now whilst I'm showing you the tank as it is in the game I'm going to be talking about the real tank, not this little pixelated monster that we have in the game. And I will be straight up, completely open and honest from the start. What we have in the game doesn't exist, never existed, was never intended to exist. It is a complete and utter fallacy. Wargaming have taken a lot of artistic license to give us this tank, but that doesn't mean to say the tank did not exist. It did, just not in this way. It was never firing missiles, and that turret never existed on a real life T92. So what is the T92? Well, the T92 was a proposed light tank. It was actually intended to be a replacement to the M41 Walker Bulldog which had only entered service in 1951, and this was proposed to be developed in 1952, oddly enough. During the tender stage, three companies were vying to get this contract. Cadillac of General Motors, Detroit Armaments, and Aircraft Armaments. Now, General Motors and Detroit went off and sort of did their own independent design, which eventually led to the development of the T-71. Aircraft armaments were eventually awarded this contract. Now, their design had a lot of innovations. In fact, a lot of things that tanks had never even been considered before. And their light tank design was far superior than any other light tank before it. The design itself was incredibly risky. In fact, as I said, it carried a lot of innovations that nobody had ever considered on an armoured vehicle before. Nevertheless, it was approved in 1954 and it went on to the production of a prototype. In 1955, numerous design changes were actually proposed and these went on to be further developed into the original prototype in 1956, the same time that the T-71 project, which was happening in parallel, was firmly cancelled. Interestingly, the T-71 was cancelled primarily due to a lack of funding and because the design was just so darn awful and had a lot of technical and mechanical problems. Now, one of the quirkiest aspects to the AA's T-92 design was its hull. Not only was it incredibly low, I mean, you can see there the driver is sort of on the floor, but it was also a strange wedge shape now, it was believed it was designed this way in order to withstand the blast from a nuclear impact. Seriously, they really believed it would do that, which is probably why in the game the front armour is so bouncy. The armour thickness was similar to the tank it was meant to replace, namely the M41 Walker Bulldog, and at its thickest it was about 317 millimetres, despite the fact that it was considerably lighter, only 18 tons to that of the Bulldog. The reason they managed to get this weight so far down was they dispensed with a lot of parts, <laughs> funnily enough, and it was made extensively out of aluminium. And in some cases, there was a strange mix of aluminium and fiberglass, especially around the fenders. Performance-wise, this thing was incredibly mobile generally reaching a top speed on a road of about 35 miles an hour or 56 kilometers an hour. Not only that, but the suspension system was a torsalistic type, which hadn't been used before in armoured tanks. And they found that this type not only kept the overall friction down, but it also dispensed with the need to lubricate them so often. Not only that, but the ride was far more comfortable and also resulted in the vehicle being considerably quieter than normal tanks. Another quirk of the T-92 was its tracks. These were not your normal metal tracks that are put together by pins. It was actually a rubber band track that was reinforced with steel wire, funnily enough. Not only that, they were incredibly thin. They're only like 
40 centimetres wide. Now, despite the hull being able to stand nuclear blast and the tracks being made of rubber bands, the most unique feature of this tank was its actual turret. It was bizarre, to say the least, and certainly not traditional. The turret itself was like a cleft design, with a sort of hollow in the middle for the gun. Either side of this hollow in the cleft elements, there were two independently rotating cupolas that could be mounted with machine guns. The main gun of the T-92 was that of the 76mm, which was actually the same gun as found on the M41 Walker Bulldog. This gun could fire APCR, high velocity AP and HE. The gun itself was actually mounted upside down, which was really weird. And that was in order to accommodate the semi-automatic loading system. This had an interesting side effect. When you fully depressed the gun, the breech block would pop out the turret. And when you fully elevate it, the breech block would drop into the hull. In order to get around that, because it did have a maximum depression of 10 degrees, they put a cage around the breech block and they had this canvas on the roof because there was a gaping hole. Certainly not traditional and certainly innovative. Trials began in 1956 and numerous issues were immediately identified, most notably the suspension unit and the tracks, which actually had a tendency to break. And, uh, you know, they, they replaced them by using the traditional metal pin link tracks from the Chaffee. Whilst two prototypes of this tank were produced, and funding was actually made available for two further prototypes, the project was cancelled in 1958 and didn't go any further. The reason behind this was because the Americans had discovered that the Soviets were designing and developing a tank called the PT-76. Because of this, they decided to try and turn the T-92 into an amphibious tank in its own right, but they quickly discovered that was totally unfeasible. Not only that, the gun's effectiveness was now becoming a serious concern due to its, due to its incredibly low caliber. I mean, by this stage, the 76mm gun had become obsolete. The T-92 was therefore cancelled in around 1958 in favour of the next tank, the Sheridan. Which is another tank that we have in the game, which has just been recently introduced, and this one fires missiles and is found at Tier 10. Now... Unlike the game version, the real life Sheridan was a little bit different. To be perfectly honest with you, the way it looks is pretty accurate and the parameters of the tank are not that inaccurate, although there are a few, again, artistic licenses that have been taken by Wargaming. Now, whilst this tank doesn't come directly from the development of the T-92, it does have a lot of the innovations of the T-92 design. The Sheridan itself was created as an amphibious and airborne tank. Simple as that. You may be able to airlift this tank under a helicopter or onto an aeroplane and drop it out via a parachute. And it was in direct response to the Soviet PT-76 that we saw earlier. Now, in order to meet this almost impossible task of having such a light tank that was still a tank, able to be in the water and able to be thrown out the back of an aeroplane, they lifted a lot of what came from the T-92. Most notably, the extensive use of aluminium, which clearly drastically reduced the armour of protection. And in real terms, this tank only offered protection against machine gun rounds. Nothing else. By quirk of fate, around this time the US Army also decided to drop all their tank designations. Gone were light tank, medium tank and heavy tank, and it was all brought under the banner of a main battle tank or MBT. Unfortunately the Sheridan didn't fall into any of those categories of MBT, so this is not categorised or designated as a tank. It was actually designated as Armoured Reconnaissance Airborne Assault Vehicle, funnily enough. The vehicle itself was lighter than the T-92, coming in at only a 15 tonnes. This was to enable it to be airlifted and, as I said, either thrown out the back of the aeroplane or dropped by parachutes. And it was amphibious. This tank was buoyant enough to allow the tank to swim 
at a top speed of just under six kilometers an hour. Out of the water, the tank itself was incredibly nippy. It could reach speeds of 70 kilometers an hour, at least on paper. The armor thickness ranged from between eight millimeters to 13 millimeters at the front. So I'm sorry guys, Blitz, you got it wrong. This tank does not bounce anything. It's paper, paper thin in real life. I mean, bullets will not go through it, but everything else will. The gun itself was both remarkable and completely unique. As far as it was a short rifle barreled gun capable of firing either missiles or specially tailored traditional ammunition. Nevertheless, it could not fire traditional AP rounds. So sorry, war game APCR through the Sheridan is just a pipe dream. A lot of artistic license there. The AP rounds and the AP capability was actually covered by the Shilar missile system. The only traditional rounds that the Sheridan was actually capable of firing was the high explosive rounds, which it did so to great effect. The production of the Sheridan actually started in around 1966 and immediately there were issues with the gun. The missile system, firstly, when used to fire the missiles, would literally lift the tank off the ground between the second and third road wheels. Not only that, but after firing the missile, the breech block would literally crack. The Sheridans themselves uh, were deployed to Vietnam, where they saw action and where their failings were highlighted in the worst ways possible. They suffered drastically against the likes of RPGs when they would literally mount against the heat of the projectile being hit against them, against their aluminium armour. It was also noticed that when they were struck by a mine, this had a tendency to cause the caseless ammunition inside the turret to ignite and literally blow the tank apart. During its deployment to Vietnam, the Sheridan never once fired a single missile. It only fired its traditional HE rounds, which it did so to devastating effect against uh, bunkers and other such targets. By 1978, the Sheridan started their long retirement, but they did remain in active service until approximately 1997, especially with the 82nd Airborne Division, where they were deployed with that division in the first Gulf War. During that Gulf War, they finally did fire the Shalar missiles in anger, all eight of them, despite 88,000 being produced. That accounts to one complete loadout of a tank, as they didn't carry many of these missiles. The Sheridan itself, whilst being in service for almost 20 odd years, never really made it as a tank, mainly due to the lack of armor and its limited ammunition loadout. I mean, it carried a maximum of nine missiles and 20 HE rounds. The missile system itself, whilst innovative and advanced for its time, was in itself a complete and utter failure, and it was never really used to any meaningful effect. Un interestingly enough, they used the same missile system on the ill-fated M60A2 Starship, where the same issues of the system that the Sheridan had were exposed again. These were notably around the tracking system and the infrared command links, which made the missiles incredibly inaccurate at targets that were not in extremely close range. And the M60 was dropped. The interesting fact about that tank, that comes from the MB70, which we know in the game as the Kampfwagen 70, oddly enough. Interestingly, both these tanks, the T-92 and the Sheridan, never realized their full potential, despite the innovations and advances in technology. In comparison with the game, the T-92 was never a missile tank. That turret never existed, and nor would it have been able to be married to that hull. The Sheridan itself, its missile system, was a complete and utter disaster, being both inaccurate and tantamount to breaking the gun effectively and lifting the tank off the ground. In real life the Sheraton had no APCR round capability. It, that was covered by the Shalar missile. So as I said a lot of artistic license taken. Anyway I've been Fujit. That has been the history of the real T92 and M551 Sheridan. 
by all means, if you like the video, comment and like and all the other stuff below. By all means, press subscribe. It's a lovely thing to do. And until the next time, I will say my usual stuff. Stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking, because that's what it's all about, guys. Having fun and being happy.